Hello everyone. In today's tutorial, I would like to talk about the TB6560 stepper motor driver that is used for controlling large stepping motors like the NEMA 17 and NEMA 23, which are used in projects involving robotics like in 3D printers and CNC machines. This motor driver is based on the Toshiba TB6560AHQ stepping motor IC and has a working voltage of 10 to 35 volts DC although it's recommended to be run at around 25 volts and has a maximum output current of 3 amps it is usable for running two or four phase stepper motors with a maximum load of 3 amps maybe something you can observe here is that there is a, a table there are some tables which are drawn on the board here so these tables give the order in which these switches here we have, we have two types of switches here we have the SPST switches these three which are labeled SW1, SW2 and SW3 and also we have these DIP switches from 1 to 6 so these switches have to be adjusted in order to be able to set the running current the stopping current the excitation mode and the decay percentage for the motor driver depending on how you are going to be using it so these tables will give you how you are going to be setting these switches for the appropriate values of your of those parameters that i've set it there and also this motor driver can run stepper motors in full mode half mode and up to one out of 16 step mode so as you can see this side we have the pins for connecting the, mic the microcontroller for example in this case i'm going to be using arduino and this side we have the pins for control for connecting the motor and then also the power supply let me now show you how this motor driver is connected to arduino so what we are going to do we shall simply connect this side of the motor driver this side these two are the enable pins so this is the negative enable pin is going to be connected to the ground so what we are going to do in this case, we are going to connect all the negative pins. For example, we are going to connect the enable negative, then the direction negative and the clock or the pulse negative. All of them are going to be connected to the ground of Arduino. Then the enable positive, I'm going to connect it to one of the digital pins of Arduino. For example, in my case, I've connected to pin 8. Actually, in most cases, some people leave these enable pins unconnected or they leave them floating. So if you leave them floating it means they are low and in that case the motor driver is enabled but i find it more practical if i connect these pins to ground and the positive one i connect to an arduino digital pin in that case in case i need to do some modifications in the code to be able to stop the motor and run it again it will be easier the positive the cw positive or the direction pin i'm going to connect it to another arduino digital pin for example, in my case, I'll be connecting it to pin 2. And then the, direct, the pulse pin or the clock pin, I'm going to connect it to Arduino pin 5. Yeah, this other side, we connect the stepper motor phases. So we are going to connect the coils. One pair of coils is going to be connected to these two terminals here. And the other motor coil is going to be connected to these other two. So in my case, this motor comes when, when the wires from the same coil are next to each other, so it is easier. But in some cases, your motor may come when you are not very sure of which wires are coming from the same coil of the motor. So in that case, you have to first check which wires of the stepper motor are connected to the same coil. Uh, let me show you how to do that very fast here. Yeah. So normally when you rotate the shaft of this motor, it will rotate freely. You don't need to force it, it just moves freely normally so what you do if you get any of these two wires and you connect them these bare wires and you connect them like this for example i've connected the i'm going to connect the black i've connected the black and green wires here so after connecting them and then you rotate your shaft again now the shaft will it will be difficult to move the shaft in other words the shaft will appear hard to move meaning that these wires belong to the same motor coil of this motor. Now if I connect the if I connect the green and blue wires like this and then I move the shaft, the shaft still moves now freely like that. So the shaft is moving freely. 
meaning that these wires are coming from different motor coils. So that is the simple test of how you can determine which of the wires belong to the same coil of the stepper motor in case you are not very sure of which of the wires to consider. Then these last two pins are the power supply pins. This one is the ground and this side is the VCC. And then I also adjust the these switches here and the DIP switches. So for example, I'll put this low. This is high, this is low, and this is low. And that's because I'm using one amp current. So I'll set that running current to one. Then S2, we said, is the stop current. In my case, I'll just put it on and I'll use a stop current of 20%. Then the switches, S3 and S4, are for determining the step mode in which you are. So for example, in this case, I'll put at 3 is on and 4 is off. So that means I'm going to be using half step mode. And then the last pin, these last pins here, S5 and S6 are for the decay, decay settings. In my case, I'm going to be using, I'm going to turn on and off, which is 25%. But you can always check out these other settings depending on how you're working out and see their effect on the running of the motor as we go on. So right now, let me have a, a simple look at the kind of code that we can be using to run this type of motor. This is the code we are going to be using. So we begin by declaring the pins that have been connected to the motor driver. We declare the direction pin which has been connected to pin 2, then the step pin and the enable pin connected to 8 as I've already shown you. So in this example I'm going to be using my motor driver in the one out of 8 step mode and in that mode the motor will be rotating or will be taking 1600 steps per revolution. So these are the steps per revolution that I'm going to be using in that mode. Then I also declare some variables like the angle, the step, then the step delay, then check angle, and the variable A. In the setup section, I will just declare the pins as output and also put the enable pin as low so that I can be able to run the motor driver. So what this code is doing is simple. It's simply checking the angle. So if the angle is zero, it means it will be increasing the value of the variable A. And if the angle is 360, then the value of variable A is going to be decreasing. Then I'll be using the map function so that I can be able to divide the 360 degrees of a revolution into the corresponding number of steps to be taken by the motor in a revolution. These four lines of code are for sending a pulse to the step pin. In other words, you first make the step pin high, then you leave a delay, and then make the step pin low. In that case, that would be one micro step. So the for loop will be able to run this, these four lines or to be able to repeat these four lines by the number of given steps that you are taking. For example, if you are using the motor driver in the one out of eight step mode like in this case, then it means this for loop is going to be repeated 1,600 times. And this will be the reverse direction of the motor. So this direction pin determines the direction of rotation. So you can either turn it low or turn it high so that the motor can turn clockwise or anticlockwise depending on how you have connected your motor phases on the motor driver. Then also another issue to mind is the speed of rotation. The speed of rotation is determined by the frequency of the pulses that are being sent to the step pin. And that is the one and that is determined by this function, the delay microseconds function. So the value of the step delay determines the speed of rotation. If the step delay is small, it means the frequency is going to be high and it means that the motor will be running faster. So that is a simple code that I've written to demonstrate the working of this motor driver. Also, I put a link in the description below where you can be able to go and check out this code. So let's now upload it to our Arduino board and then we can be able to see how it's going to be working on our motor driver. So I've now uploaded the code to my Arduino and I want to 
turn on the motor driver and then I see how the motor is going to be running. I also included a simple tape here on the motor shout so that I can be able to see how the motor is moving. So let's try it out and see. First of all, I'm going to turn on the motor driver. When you turn on the motor driver, you will see this LED light, meaning that the motor driver is now on. Then let me switch on my Adreno so that I can be able to run the motor. So you can see the motor running now. And I'm using a full step mode and 25% decay. So these settings can be changed depending on how you want your motor to run. For example, I can change it to another step mode and I see how it is going to run. So you need to adjust the DIP switches to move to another step mode. But you should never adjust these switches when the motor driver is on. So first of all, you need to first turn off the motor driver, then you adjust the switches. Otherwise, you may damage your motor driver. So let's turn it off and adjust the switches now. Okay, now the motor driver is off. So I'll adjust the DIP switches to move to another step mode. So I was in the half step mode. So now let me use uh, one, I'll turn S4 and S3, both of them I'll turn them on. In that case, I'll be moving to the one out of eight step mode. So let me turn it on and then we see how our motor is going to move in that case. Okay, the driver is now on. Let me switch on the Arduino now. And as you can see, it's still the same code, but the movement is different. Let me take it to a, another step mode now. I have now adjusted it to another step mode. I've turned both switch three and four off, meaning this is now the full step mode. Let me turn it on again and I see how it's going to run now. So you can see now the movement is now running faster in full step mode. So the explanation for this I'll put in the link below so that you can be able to know the reason why, why the speed of rotation is different with different step modes. So that is how our TB6560 stepper motor driver is going to be used with Adreno. Hope you've learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also watch my other tutorials. Thanks for watching.